So good evening. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone to the CEFTAS uh, event this evening. I'm going to be hosting it. So the topic this evening is, is called, we're calling it Spotlight, uh, post-election Cyprus. We've got um, two speakers. One of our speakers unfortunately has uh, had to drop out. Merkan Hamid won't be speaking, but I'm very pleased to introduce two other uh, guests this evening who will start the debate. Uh, I'll introduce myself. I'm, my name is Melal Hussein Eja. Uh, I'm from Turkish Cypriot Heritage and I'm a member of the British House of Laws and have been for 10 years. I have a special interest in Cyprus, obviously, because of my family uh, background. Um, and for many, many years and decades, I've been following events very closely, as I'm sure many, the majority of Turkish Cypriots uh, have been have done as well. Um, we've had elections recently, and it's thrown into a, a sharp contrast now as to where where we go from here, especially as um, Turkish Cypriots. Um, I think there's a lot of debate about what comes next after the elections. Um, we've always there's always been under the United Nations auspices they've had the mandate to have. Um, a two state um, a unified Cyprus. There have been various attempts at this. Uh, the last one being in Crans Montana in 2017, where talks collapsed, uh, unfortunately. And very little activity has happened since then. Now, the new president is Ersin Tatar. He won by 51.7%, uh, a majority of 3.48%, a very slim majority which indicated to me and many other commentators that Cyprus seems to be very, North Cyprus, Turkish Cypriot seems to be very much divided. Um, how is a new president, and I hear the new government, which might be established, has been established, I think, today, what efforts are they going to make to bring people together? How are um, we going to have any resolution when we have such a divided community? Um, so, I don't know if our speakers will have the answer to this, but they're certainly going to reflect on their views and where they're coming from on this. My own view is um, it's become increasingly difficult as the years have gone on, decades have gone on, to come to any meaningful um, peace deal. It's becoming more and more difficult. It seems to me as well that the Republic of Cyprus, the Greek Cypriots are more and more reluctant to share power which, which is what is needed. And as we've seen now, the elections in Cyprus have rather entrenched a more conservative uh, leadership, which are, who are not in favor of a federal solution, but very much as has declared the other day by the president, they want a two-state solution. My question for that is, who will they negotiate with to achieve this? There are many other questions as well. So um, I'm gonna, leave it there and I'm going to introduce uh, um, the first guest but before I do so I just want to let people know this is being recorded um, and at the end of it we'll have a group uh, we'll have a group photograph as well so if you don't want to be photographed you can always leave uh, leave the meeting um, I'm going to ask the speakers to speak for about 30 minutes each and then we'll have a question and answer session and I, if you can put up on the chat box any questions you'd like to ask and put who you are as well, that would be really helpful. And keep the questions fairly short, and then maybe we can get um, as many people in as possible. So the first speaker was due to be Shenel Elchin. Um, we've had technical problems with getting him online. So I'm going to take um, uh, Delia Beatle, who's an active youth leader in the Turkish Cypriot community. She promotes resolution of the Cyprus conflict and was a member of various conflict resolution groups. And she worked for the Cyprus EU Association. So I'm going to invite Delia to speak now, um, expressing her views. And we'll take, I think if we can get um, Shannon online as well, um, we'll take both and then take questions afterwards. Otherwise I'll take questions in, into what uh, Delia Hanab has said. So Delia, if you don't mind, um, I'm going to invite you to speak uh, right now. Sure, it's a pleasure. Um, first of all, thank you. Thank for, you. Um, do you hear me? 
Yes, we can hear you. Yes. First of all, um, thank you for the event and for the um, invitation. Um, basically, um, I'm going to start from um, from a little bit before the elections, actually, and um, carry on to what is happening after the elections now. Today, as you just mentioned, um, the, the new government is formed. And um, I'm going to come to that. But um, just before that, um, I want to start with the elections. Um, on the 18th of October, we elected our, um, some of us elected, let's say, uh, Ersin Tatar as the new um, Turkish Cypriot leader. I don't feel um, at all represented by Mr. Um, Tatar, not because I didn't vote for him, but because I don't find these elections neither fair nor democratic. I'll explain why. We have been, as Turkish Cypriots, we have been over the um, years, uh, over uh, many elections, we have been hearing about Turkish intervention to the Turkish Cypriot elections over and over. However, um, these interventions were never to such a large extent, and um, it wasn't so shameless. For the first time, a leader in, in power, Mr. Akunja, a few days before the elections, came um, out saying that he was threatened by Turkey not to stand in the elections. He was threatened by his family, actually. Um, a few days later, he added that uh, Turkish embassy was acting as the um, campaign office of Mr. Tatar. And indeed, that was the case. We witnessed, all of us witnessed, uh, many cases of um, the embassy intervening, inviting um, the UBP. Uh, UBP is the party supporting Mr. Tatar. Mr. Tatar. Um, was the um, leader of UEP before um, he got elected and he was uh, their um, candidate. The UBP uh, MPs were um, invited by the Turkish embassy um, for, um, for strategic uh, moves. Um, we, we have been hearing and actually we, we saw it in news that there were 20 campaigners sent by AK Parti of Turkey to Cyprus to campaign for Mr. Akinci to lose. There were bribes given very openly. There were bank transactions made to many people um, to vote for the candidate that um, Turkey he actually supported, and that was uh, Mr. Tatar. And then there was the fixing of the water pipes, which were broken for over um, 10 months. We had over summer months, we had water shortages um, because there is uh, water coming um, from Turkey under the Mediterranean Sea. The pipelines were broken, it wasn't fixed, and this as well was um, used as a, as a, a threatening, as a way of threatening um, us to, to show us what would happen if we voted for Mr. Kinji. So this is how we, we went to the election. A few days before the first round of the elections, what happened is that the pipelines were fixed by, um, by Turkey. And um, they wanted to have an official opening of this um, fixing of the pipelines, which was actually banned according to the election um, regulation. So the Board of Elections prohibited official opening. They set a new Ankara and had to open air, which was the moment where um, they announced with uh, Mr. Erdogan, the president of Turkey, that. Varosha would be partially opened. Um, first of all, this is against the UN Security Council's um, resolutions. Um, secondly, this actually costed us the government because the it, it, it was a coalition government um, back then with Halkın Partisi. And the leader of Halkın Partisi, who was uh, the foreign affairs minister back then, actually heard about this um, together with all of us during the uh, press um, 
conference they had Mr. Tatar had with Mr. Erdogan in Turkey. So all this were happening without um, without any uh, involvement of Turkish Cypriots. And a few days before the elections, despite the elections uh, prohibitions, that is um, what the law says basically. Um, so what happened is in the first round, Mr. Um, Tatar and Mr. Akunj uh, were uh, very close to each other. And um, then we had the second round uh, uh, one week later, on the 8th. In this one week, there were again people from Turkey, MPs basically, um, from AK Party and from um, MHP, um, which, which is the Um, Delia, I think we just lost you there. Are you? No, I think it's frozen there. I don't know if. Um... Turkish. Uh, oh, with... oh, you're back. Okay, you're back. Ah. Um, so this one week passed um, this way. And um, in the end, in the second round, 20, about 20,000 more people voted. In one week, the voting population actually increased by 20,000 people. Now, in um, Cypriot context, this is a very um, high number, especially considering that Mr. Tatar in the end received 67,385 votes in the second round. And um, in the first round, he had 35,872 votes. So these 20,000 people that, were, uh, that didn't vote in the first round, basically most of them, almost all of them, I would say, voted for Mr. Tatar together with um, all these efforts of Turkey. But the, the important thing I think here and the interesting thing is that um, they don't think this was any sort of intervention at all. Mr. Tatar, during his victory speech on the night of the elections, thanked Mr. Erdogan and his vice president, Mr. Oktay, saying that he would not have won without them. And the MPs that were in Cyprus, they went back to Turkey after the elections and um, they were appellated at the Turkish parliament for their victory in Cyprus. So um, coming to um, what um, you just said in the beginning that we are um, actually divided. I don't think the Turkish Cypriot community is divided actually. I think the, um, the majority of the Turkish Cypriot community um, still supports a federal uh, settlement and um, despite all these efforts, despite all these um, interventions and bribing and threatening from Turkey, Mr. Akinci, who is a firm supporter of federation, got 48%. And um, then uh, what happened afterwards is that on 10th of November, which was about um, three weeks after the elections, there was a, a large demonstration against this with Mr. Akinji's participation. And um, basically what we were saying was that we want to decide for our future. We don't want um, Turkey to tell us what to do. We don't want um, any any other party to tell us what, uh, what um, we are going to do, and um, we actually insist on federation. Um, now, basically, of course, um, you need to purchase for federation. And um, as I am saying that the Turkish Cypriot leader does not represent me, the, um, the hope that I had, um, and I still have during all this, um, events, let's say, starting um, from 
a few months before the elections and um, I still have that hope. I have Greek Cypriot compatriots who say that Mr. Anastasiades doesn't represent them either. And um, when I look at the opinion polls, there are um, recent opinion polls uh, which were conducted on both sides of the islands by um, by some academics and, and it's uh, supported by uh, many universities, actually it's funded by the London School of Economics, who is showing that actually there is, um, there is support from both Turkish Cypriots and Greek Cypriots for a federal settlement in Cyprus, as it is um, suggested by um, the United Nations, a bicommunal, bizonal federation with political equality. There are some parameters that um, in these um, polls uh, they played with, and they did find um, two scenarios where both Turkish Cypriots and Greek Cypriots would support, uh, would vote yes in a in a referendum um, if um, such a such a solution was uh, um, was reached by by the two leaders. Um, now, what happened after the elections as well is that. Um, of course, um, there were reactions from, from the United Nations, there were reactions from the European Union um, for what happened in Varosha, basically, um, because uh, opening of Varosha, even, uh, even though it was partially opened, it was against the UN Security Council um, resolutions. And um, on top, um, on 24th of um, November, there was a discussion in the European Parliament. On the 26th, they um, issued a resolution uh, acknowledging um, what happened in, uh, in Cyprus, basically, with regards to um, what I have been talking about and urging Turkey to stop its um, illegal actions in Marosha and reverse the decision on Marosha calling the European Council to maintain its unified position vis-a-vis -vis unilateral and illegal actions by Turkey, urging the European Council to impose tough sanctions in response to Turkey's illegal actions. And European Council is actually meeting today and tomorrow to decide on this. They also underlined the UN Secretary General's call for resumption of negotiations from where they left off in Cran Montana in 2017. They reiterated their support for a fair, comprehensive, and viable settlement on the basis of a bicommunal bizonal federation. And um, this is my favorite. The European Parliament adopted this resolution saying that they stand by both the Turkish and Greek Cypriot communities in their quest for peace and stability and calls on the Commission to promptly implement the second annual action program for aid to the Turkish Cypriot community. And um, this is basically what is happening after the, after the elections. And um, since today is the um, Human Rights Day, I want to finish my intervention with uh, um, with a human rights violation that um, we as Turkish Cypriots, Turkish speaking Cypriots, let me say, as European citizens are um, feeling in the, not only in the northern part of Cyprus, everywhere in Europe actually. Since as a citizen of the Republic of Cyprus, obviously I'm a European citizen, and um, I have been talking about the European Parliament discussions, the European Council, um, the European Commission. Um, by European Union law, I have the right to follow all this in Turkish language because Turkish language is my mother tongue and Turkish language is the official language of the Republic of Cyprus, which uh, I hold uh, citizenship of. Um, but I cannot because Turkish is not an official language. And- um, Sorry, Dalia, can I just 
intervene? Can I just yeah. intervene? I've had a couple of questions that maybe you can direct it at you. So I just wanted to um, put them to you so you can include them in your contribution, if you don't mind. There's somebody called Ibrahim Kupersley. He's saying, you may not agree, but will you would you support the will of Turkish Cypriots if they voted for a two-state solution? He's asked the question twice, so I think if you can reply to that in your contribution. Thanks. Um, yes, um, they want to, okay. Um, actually, I um, would I support, no, I wouldn't support. I don't support anything that I don't agree with. But if the majority of Turkish Cypriots, and um, I am um, emphasizing Turkish Cypriots, so um, actually I would uh, I, I will probably come to that uh, later. That with the um, with the new uh, government, we we are hearing that there is a list of twenty some thousand. Um, people that are waiting to, to become a citizen of TRNC who might vote uh, for that. Um, so if it was the will of Turkish Cypriots, I would respect it. But um, if it is something that is imposed on us by people who um, don't live in Cyprus, who have never been in Cyprus even, no, I'm not going to respect it, no. Sorry, thank you for answering that. Can you, sorry, please do continue. Um, yes, I was saying as a, as a Turkish speaking European citizen, by European law, by European Charter of Fundamental Rights, um, which prohibits any discrimination based on any grounds such as sex, race, color, ethnic or social origin, genetic features, language, religion or belief, political or any other opinion, membership of a national minority, property, birth, disability, age, or sexual orient orientation shall be prohibited. This is what Article 21 of the European Charter of Fundamental Rights say. And um, basically, as a Turkish speaking European citizen, I am, I, I am discriminated based on language because I cannot follow any discussion in the European Parliament, in the European Council, at the um, European um, Summit, in the European Commission, unless I speak any other language. Um, obviously, I'm speaking English, but this is not the case for many Turkish Cypriots, and it shouldn't be the case because my Greek Cypriot compatriots are um, Italians, um, Spanish people, French people. They can follow any discussion they want in their mother tongue, but we cannot. We cannot um, attend to, to these meetings most of the time, although we, uh, we were invited, because um, there's no Turkish translation. And although there are translation to 24 languages, when you go to the European Parliament, the, the whole uh, building is, uh, the, the whole hall is actually um, full of translators translating um, to 24 languages, but Turkish is not among them. Um, so um, what is happening is that we have been discriminated. We cannot follow these discussions. And this actually puts us in a very difficult situation where we feel part of the European family, but actually we're not there. We're not in, we're not out. We are not, we don't feel represented by, um, by the Republic of Cyprus either, whose official language is uh, Turkish, but they don't use it. But um, we don't, um, we cannot feel part of the EU as a result of um, not being able to use our language. Um, what we are doing is we started together with Niazi Kızılyürek, who is the only Turkish Cypriot member of the European Parliament, the one and the only. 
Uh, we started a petition in the European Parliament asking for Turkish to be uh, an official language of the European Union. And together we had a press conference on the Human Rights Day, together with 33 separate organizations, including uh, by communal organizations, um, asking for European citizens to sign this petition. And um, I think I'm going to stop here and um, I can take any other questions if there are any. Thank you. Can you hear me? Hello. Um, yes. Derya Hanım. Merhaba Şener nasılsınız? Sağ olun. Ee, Merya Hanım galiba gitti. Ben başlayayım, devam edeyim herhalde. Sanırım koptu. Öyle bir mesaj geldi. Buyurun siz. Yeah. Uh, good evening everyone. I'm very pleased to raise up the real Turkish Cypriot voice in England, actually. Um, I can... Uh, there are already summary the last development, uh, which happened recently. I'm going to define the situation, which is not new in Cyprus. As you know, there is a plan which designed by Turkey 1950s, which is annexing the island or divide the island. Taksim and Ilhak. This is the point that uh, they designed in the 1950s and systematically since then. They are working on this project and we are nearly the end of the project that they are going to divide the island permanently. Uh, especially uh, Turkish Cypriots, we have been living in extraordinary conditions during the years of 63, 74, but it's not finished actually. Since 74, we are living in extraordinary condition for several years. Um, during 1974, uh, as you know, there were three guarantors of the Republic of Cyprus, and there was a, a fascist junta coup in Cyprus that uh, they defeated the Makarios government. Turkey uh, negotiated the other guarantors and uh, organized a peace operation, let's say. Uh, to stop the fighting in, in the island. According to uh, 1960 treaties, Zurich and London Agreement, the, uh, the guarantee agreement, three guarantors should uh, guarantee the unit of the country and the uh, territory of the country and the unit of the country also and respect the Republic of Cyprus. Uh, we haven't seen any kind of this action which they have been taking for uh, several years, if we, if we look at uh, what Turkey has been doing. We are saying that uh, guarantors, but I'm not sure about that, they are guarantors. For example, uh, British, they managed to uh, or, uh, create a confrontation to both two communities in Cyprus and fightings, 1950s and 60s. Then uh, Greece organized a, a fascist a coup in the island to destruct the real estate. And Turkey promised to uh, stop the fighting between two communities and in, in the Greek Cypriot communities also. 
They did not do it. I am not saying that they are guarantors. They are terminators of Star of course. They are uh, they are terminator of Republic of Cyprus. If we look to Turkey, what has been doing since 1974, if you you are a guarantor country, why Turkey transfer population systematically from Turkey to northern part of Cyprus? It's it's a war crime. It's against the Geneva Convention, 1949 Geneva Convention. If you enter in a country by force, you are not able to transfer population your country and change the demography of the island. Especially, uh, they are saying that there is a democracy. Democracy is uh, depending on a population in any kind of country. I can say that uh, there are many census during 74 up to now, but nobody declared the real numbers of the population since then. The best estimation, which I uh, know uh, from various sources, the Turkish Cypriots are 135,000 total. The best estimation of what I'm saying now. But the total population of northern part of the Cyprus, uh, somebody says 600,000, somebody says 800,000. The former prime minister, Mr. Kuchuk, says we have a quite crowded population. Uh, we are not saying uh, the uh, certain amount of population, how many people are living in the north. This is affecting uh, uh, directly democracy of the Turkish Cypriots in the northern part of the island. If you don't know the population, how can you say we are going to, we are saying that democracy and election? Everything is uh, like a theater here. Everything play, play their role here, actually. And uh, in last election, can I just interrupt, Shener Bey? Shener Bey, can I just interrupt, Shener Bey? I've just had a question yes, that um, I'll put to you now because it's for you. It's from someone called Charles Ramsden. He said, are you denouncing Turkey's guardianship? Sorry? Uh, sorry? He said, are you denouncing Turkey's guardianship? Oh, sorry, yeah. guarantorship. Uh, guarantorships. Uh, yes, we are. We don't need any guarantors, which I told at the beginning of my words, that guarantors play their role as a terminator, not a guarantor, to respect the Cypriots. I'm not talking about the Turkish Cypriots. I'm talking about all Cypriots. Uh, no guarantorship uh, is good for the future of Cyprus, but I'm not telling something and we don't want any armament and any guns and any foreign soldiers in our island, including the British base in the island. I'm talking all these foreign forces. I'm not talking one side that uh, we don't want any, we don't want any armament and any guns, any soldiers in our, our island. I was talking about uh, the population. 2009, we make a survey in our schools. I'm talking about 2009, and the we found some data there that 34% uh, of the children in our school's parents are Turkish Cypriots. 34. 9% mixed marriage, one side is Turkish Cypriot. 19% settlers. 37% uh, mainly people, cheap illegal work from Turkey, mainly 90, uh, sorry, 37%. And one percent are countries, British, Russian, whatever. Uh, this data from 2009, I know that there is distributing citizenship, especially during the years of 2009 up to 2014, 15, these years, thousands and thousands they distributed citizenship of TRNC. And how can we say that there is a democracy and there is an election? For example, I know that the population of British Britain is 8,000, 8, uh, 80 million something. What about China? China is 1.5 billion. We can uh, bring 100 million job, uh, Chinese to Britain and we can organize an election there. Is that the result and showing the real political will of British people or it will be uh, will of the Chinese people, this is the example. Um, the last election, 
Yeah. Shimon like Nebe, can I just come in on that question, on that point? There's a question yes, asking whether whether you're saying that um, as British, someone said as British Turks, Turkish Cypriots, we vote in this country, in the United Kingdom. He said, are you saying that people who are citizens of North Cyprus are, shouldn't be allowed to vote? Um, yes, I think uh, people who live in, live in Cyprus, they have a right to vote. I'm against that every, anybody from abroad to vote for our country. Because if you go to Rome, to as the Roman do. If you are in Britain, you vote for the British, not Cyprus. You have a connection. If you live in Cyprus, of course you can vote. Uh, we can mm -hmm. arrange it, not for the general election. They can arrange it for, if they stay in Cyprus, they can vote for the local election, like in Britain. This can be, okay. but not for the general election. Okay. Um, there is no, uh, the elections are not showing the real Turkish Cypriot will in northern part of Cyprus, because democracy completely changed. Not only for numbers, but on the other hand, uh, Turkish Cypriot culture is under the threat because the numbers of the settlers are more than us nowadays. And Turkey Cypriot's character, there is a, a character that we are secular people, first of all. We are not imposing any belief, any religion to anybody else. For example, uh, religion never being a conflict in Cyprus between the Greek-speaking and Turkish-speaking Cypriots. Nationality, yes, but not religion. Now there is an imposement by Mr. Erdogan from Turkey, Erdogan government, that uh, changed the belief and the uh, of Turkish uh, culture of the Turkish Cypriots, secular culture of the Turkish Cypriots. Since 1974, the authorities in the north, the regime, political regime in the north, built 17 schools, one seven, 17 schools, but they built. 212 mosques. We have a quite crowded classrooms, over 35 students, but there are lots of empty uh, mosques in the northern part of the island. Uh, this is another imposement. Actually, we, we are not living in a uh, normal country. We are not saying the normal things. The last election is not the election. They appointed Mr. Tatar as a spokesman of AKP, Mr. Taib Erdogan's party, like a civil servant of Mr. Erdogan, in the, uh, Mr. Tatar is acting like that. There is nothing to say for the benefit of the Turkish Cypriots since he was uh, appointed. For example, uh, two-state solution. We are already exercising two-state solution since 1983. There is a TRNC, but they didn't manage to recognize it. Only Turkey so-called recognized TRNC, but they are repeating this similar uh, uh, fairy tale that uh, there is a TRNC. There, it will be two-state solution. Nobody is going to accept it. It's not realistic. The only benefit, uh, unification is the benefit for both communities in Cyprus. We are against the division. Cyprus is too small to divide it. It's too big to live together here. This is the uh, our main point that we have been uh, trying to beat. Uh, if they are, they are talking about three states, if they are going to accept it, if I'm not, I don't believe it. Uh, North part belongs to the part of Turkey clearly, because already the population change. Uh, our Cypriot culture is under threat. Uh, all the big enterprise and the business people from Turkey, they got, uh, they have a uh, business in the northern part. And uh, they, are, they, they already occupying everything. I'm not saying that these countries belong to Scipios nowadays, in especially the northern part. Northern part will be the part of Turkey, and Greek Scipios will be the neighbor of direct Turkey, not uh, Turkish Scipios. This is another uh, danger. But everything is relating to the developments in Turkey. Mr. Er when Mr. Erdogan came in power in 2001, he was mentioning something about the uh, human rights, full membership of the European Union, respect the uh, 
religions, uh, freedom of speech or whatever. What about now in Turkey? We can say that uh, the intellectuals, the writers, political party leaders, they are in prison and waiting for the uh, here in the court for three, four, five years. Afterwards, they said that you are free, you can go. It's not a, a fair uh, juridical system in Turkey. Um, what about neighbors? Turkey uh, has a big problem with their neighbors nowadays. Iraq, uh, uh, Syria, uh, Greece, Cyprus. I mean, I know the reason. Turkey's economy is collapsed, bankrupt. 482 billion debt Turkey has. This is the highest debt of the Republic of Turkey history. Uh, because of the uh, bad governing of Mr. Erdogan and, and, and his party. Now they have been trying to change uh, the direction of the people to raise up some other issues to uh, discuss of the uh, people. I mean, this is why the, Turkey uh, has been trying to create a problem with their neighbors, including Cyprus. Turkey doesn't want uh, the land is not important for Cyprus. The, uh, the people of Cyprus is not important. The land is important for them. They don't want only half of it. They want all because of the oil and gas issue in the region. This is why what I, I can say. And this is why they appointed Mr. Tatar being a voice of AKP, uh, Mr. Erdogan, in negotiation. And two-state solution is not lit anywhere. It's a deadlock. Uh, the solution is based on the parameter of UN, which both sides agreed on these uh, different summits, especially in last Berlin meeting that Mr. Anastasiadis and Mr. Akinji agreed on. They should start that point, and it's very clear. Solution is based on by communal, by zonal federation, uh, Based uh, with the political equality of, of both sides, this is what would like to I would like to say now. Thank you very much, Chino. Um I've got to, before we take questions. Um, I'm Fabian Hamilton, who's a, a British uh, MP, Labour MP, uh, has been listening, and he's due to leave at eight o'clock. And I was going to invite him to say a few words. He's someone that's been closely involved in. Uh, Turkey and Cyprus, and we've worked together on uh, on some of these projects. So I'd like to, Fabian, are you still on, online? I am online, yes, if indeed, can... Meryl. Yes. Oh, it's lovely uh, to see you. I recognise you at the beginning. So if you'd like to say a few words now before you leave, I'll invite you to um, make a contribution. Thank you. That is, that is very kind of you, Meryl, and thank you, and thank you, Ibrahim Dosh, for organising this. Uh, I'm not in Roundhay Park, as you might uh, imagine. <laughs> it's too cold. Uh, but I thought you'd like to see one of the nicest bits of my constituency here in Leeds. Uh, Shena, it's lovely to see you again. Uh, Deria, uh, thank you very much for your contribution. Uh, Meryl, of course, thank you for chairing this. Uh, you and I have worked closely on these issues. Mary Southcott, I know, is here as well. She encouraged me to make sure I was here this evening, and I'm just sorry I have to go at 8 p.m. Thank you. Oh, and Euripides Evriviades, of course, lovely to see you too. Um, Thank you uh, for your contributions. I just wanted to listen, really. I didn't expect to be asked to make a contribution, but I was found myself nodding my head at various stages of Deria and Shena's uh, speeches. And one of the things that the British Labour Party agrees on, I should say that I am the shadow minister uh, in the uh, opposition covering uh, Cyprus. And I've been given the specific brief of Cyprus because I've taken a strong interest over the last 20 years in the future of Cyprus. And I was there in the run up to the 2004 referendum, meeting with the then president of the Republic and the leader of the, of, of, of the Turkish Cypriots. Um, Mustafa Akinji uh, is somebody that I've met on many, many occasions, uh, though I've yet to meet Mr. Tata. Um, the fact is that the British Labour Party believes strongly that the uh, idea of having guarantors, the United Kingdom, Greece and Turkey is outdated in a modern republic uh, and uh, a modern mm. European state. 
and that it's something that if we were in power, uh, we would renounce uh, pretty quickly, frankly, um, because we think that any state should stand on its own uh, without those uh, the necess necessity, I'm sorry, for guarantors. Now, Shena mentioned uh, the controversial issue of the sovereign uh, military bases. Uh, and I'm very conscious that the United Kingdom uh, has a role to play here. Now, what we've said in the Labour Party so far is that we would be happy to reduce the amount of land that those sovereign bases occupy without vacating them completely. Uh, that is our current policy. But of course, as our shadow minister for peace and disarmament, a role that is not uh, one in the British government, uh, so I don't really shadow anybody, uh, I take the view that we need to work towards demilitarization. That means removing Turkish troops uh, in a phased way from the soil of the sovereign state of Cyprus. We are firmly behind a bizonal, bicommunal federal republic. It's something we really want to see in the British Labour Party. And if we form the government of this country at the next election in 2024 or sooner, we will work incredibly hard uh, to, to help both sides to come together. Uh, whilst a two-state solution may be an answer for uh, Israel and Palestine, uh, we don't believe, and I certainly don't believe, uh, from my many, many visits and meetings with people from both communities, that it is the answer for Cyprus. A unified island under the bizonal, bicommunal federal republic uh, model is, I believe, the one that would suit most, if not all, Cypriots. Uh, and we do desperately want to see Cyprus come back together again as a single united uh, island and united nation. So our role, our policy would be to work hard for that peaceful solution to bring people back together so that they can live their lives together and try and overcome the terrifying and awful divisions of the past to look towards the future as a modern European state, as demilitarized as we possibly can. So that's just what I wanted to say, Meryl. I hope that's helpful to the debate. And I'm only sorry that I can't uh, be with you longer, but unfortunately I have another meeting in just a few minutes time. But thank you for giving me the chance to say these few words. I hope they've rung a few bells with people listening this evening. Uh, thank you, Fabian. That um, was very interesting. I'm so glad you were uh, able to take part. It's very important that people hear the official oppositions, the Labour Party's uh, position on Cyprus, because um, it's, it's of, often not very clear that most political parties have a position on Cyprus. I think it's slipped down so far on any political agenda. There's so much else going on in this, certainly in the United Kingdom and globally, that Cyprus has become, you know, a non-issue, sadly, uh, for many politicians in British Parliament. So it's important that, you know, people like yourself myself and others, certainly there are colleagues of mine in the House of Lords who are very, very interested in Cyprus and want to keep it on the agenda um, for the reasons that you say, to try and resolve this situation and give Turkish Cypriots, all Cypriots, you know, the same rights and enjoy the same rights and freedom that any, any other European peoples enjoy at the moment. And I'm acutely aware of that. So thank you very much. Um, so both speakers have finished speaking. I've had quite a few questions coming up. So what I'll do is I'll put them uh, to both speakers. I'll, I'll select, I can't choose all of them because there's so many now and some of them are very long. So what I'm gonna do is ask uh, a, a question and I'll ask both of you to come back. Can you keep your question, I'll reply short and then we can get more in, okay? So what I'll do, there's one that came up earlier. Um, it's certainly about, um, where is it? Yeah, I think there was one that Shinobi mentioned about people being allowed to vote. I think that's brought in quite a lot of um, comments about people um, who live in Cyprus. Some of them are, you know, part Turkish Cypriot, part um, families from Turkey originally. Are, someone said, are you, are you saying that they shouldn't be allowed to vote? That was one question that was put. Um, and the other one was about, I think Fabian Habermas was gone, so there's no point asking him questions about that. So I, I, I think just clarify, I think there was some confusion about what you meant, uh, Shenerbe, about um, who are citizens 
of North Cyprus, who should be, in your view, in your opinion, should be entitled to vote, um, bearing in mind that so many people came, it came there after 1974, have been born there, um, some second generation, third generation even. If you could just clarify your comments about that, because there's been quite a few questions on that, which has um, caused some confusion. Can you unmute and respond to yep. that, please? Uh, who will be the waters in the northern part of Ireland? I think this is the question, I think. Yeah, I think yeah. people are asking for you to clarify your comments on that. Okay, uh, human rights is a different issue if you compare, I mean, if you're saying something human rights. Uh, of course, there is a systematic transfer of population from Turkey to Cyprus to change the demography. They did it deliberately. It's a, a war crime. I already mentioned that against the 1949 Geneva Convention, Turkey entered the country by force and transfer population and settled them. They give them the properties of the Greek Cypriots and they settled them in the island to create a colony in the northern part of Cyprus in 20th century. Um, this is the, the crime of the rulers of Turkey, not the people. I'm not talking, accusing the people who are living in the island. I can say that these people are grasp the rights of the Turkish Cypriots, but there is one exception. During the Anam plan, 2004, they let these people to vote for the Anam plan. This, is, this can be acceptable numbers that already uh, at the negotiation table, they accepted 50,000 settlers. This is acceptable. Uh, this, this can be tolerated for. But since Anam plan 2004 up to now, they distributed more than uh, hundred thousands of citizenship. How can we prevent if nowadays the numbers of the settlers are more than the Turkish Cypriots? How can we are saying that the Turkish Cypriot political will, even if in last election show that these people are under control or they are diverting their votes for the favor of the Turkish policy, not Turkish Cypriot policy. Mm. Uh, okay. We can so, say that. The, so, who do you think? So, just uh, on the, the they, point they that was made, it, who should have the right to vote then um, in North, in North Cyprus elections? Turkey just to Cypriots. clear on that, are you saying people that are born there? Are they have to be born there, no. or you know, marry Turkey somebody Cypriots. who's uh, no, uh, Turkish Cypriot? No, uh, Turkey Cypriots, and also the people who voted during the Anam plan. That's all. Nothing else. Okay, that's clear. Thank you. Um, I've got another question I wanted to just put to you as well. Um, somebody, so Pantelis Mina, said, without a reunified federal Cyprus, both the Greek Cypriots and the Turkish Cypriots will become extinct. Does, do you agree with that, Delia Hanum? I'll take you, Delia Hanum, you haven't spoken yet. Uh, totally. I totally agree with that. And um, I think we have to understand, both Turkey Cypriots and Greek Cypriots should understand that, as um, Shanarbe quite rightly put it, Cyprus is too little to divide, and it's too big to, to share. Basically, um, Greek Cypriots need to understand that if they don't hold the hand that we have been extending them um, since the Anon plan, basically, um, what, what will happen is that there won't be any Turkish Cypriots left uh, on the island to, um, to live with, and Turkey will become um, their uh, neighbor. Shadar Bey uh, was uh, mentioning this earlier, that actually there are currently two state solutions that have been um, put in the Today, the, the new government is formed, and two-state um, solution is in the government program. Um, but this is what we have been living, basically. We have been living a two-state um, model since 1983. And what has been happening is um, the, the picture that we are seeing. Um, time passes, and Turkish Cypriots are living Cyprus. 
they're being replaced by Turkish population uh, from Turkey. And if we don't come together and agree to live together in a federated state very soon, and I'm hoping that we still have the chance, it's not over yet, then there will be no Turkish Cypriot, no Greek Cypriot left, basically. So yes, I agree. Um, I've been asked to ask more questions, so I certainly will. Um, someone, Ahmed Mustafa, asked me to address the questions, and I thought I was doing that. But um, some of the questions, are, some of them are not questions, they're statements. Um, uh, Leila Kemal was, uh, said, who can guarantee the peace on the island? Never happened before, not with the United Nations. At last we have peace. Could you respond to that? Um, sorry, I didn't understand the question. Ah, oh, okay, Shanarba is going to answer it. Can you see it? Can you see on the chat? Um, I do see She's, it, but She I was don't... saying, who's going to guarantee peace on the island? Because the United Nations haven't been able to achieve that. They've failed in the past. She's saying, who would, in your, from what you're saying, your perspective? I mean, these, you know, can I make clear to all the viewers as well? These are the views of our two speakers. So, you know, they can be challenged or agreed with, you know, that's what we have. That's a, a democratic discussion. These are views of people who are based in Cyprus. Not everyone's going to agree with uh, their views. A lot of people will agree. A lot of people won't agree. And the same in any other country. So can I just make that clear? Um, but just respond to some Leila Kemal, who said, who's going to guarantee peace on the island? Um, I don't think anybody can guarantee peace on the island. I don't think the guarantor's role was to guarantee the peace either. I mean, if you read the guarantor agreement, what was guaranteed there by Turkey, by the UK, um, was that in case there was a problem with the integrity of Republic of Cyprus, they would intervene to put it put uh, back the order of the republic of cyprus the guarantors are not guaranteeing peace please um let's uh, let's make that clear so whenever people attack us and we do receive um, a lot of attacks on this um this is what um, we need to understand turkey is not guaranteeing um, peace in cyprus that's not uh, their uh, right to guarantorship as the treatment or uh, the treaty of guarantee that they signed in 1960. I've got another question here is that um, I think it was more Shainer being talked about the Turkish Cypriots being secular, which I agree with and I, I that's how I identify myself as a Turkish Cypriot. Um, but he points out that Greek Cypriots are as a, as a whole, as a community, very religious, and the church is very much involved in the politics of the Republic of Cyprus. How would you respond to that? Uh, historically, as you know, church has a role because church was the leading uh, role for the community. It has a political role also. This is why uh, Orthodox Church uh, is very strong in Greek Cypriot community. Mm. Uh, as you know, uh, Cyprus are under Ottoman rule, and uh, rulers were Turkish at that time, Ottomans. And uh, Greek Cypriot community ruled by the church. This is why uh, church has a very strong uh, position in the Greek Cypriot community. But nowadays, uh, people are not. Uh, fond of their religion. I mean, the Orthodox, you, you can talk to the youngsters. They are completely changed in the Greek Cypriot community, too. We are not saying uh, similar things that we they had in the past, actually. Of course, the uh, church has a strong position is still now. Um, I can say that uh, also the response of the Miss, uh, Miss uh, Leila Kemal about the, who would be the guarantor of the peace in the island. I advise that they should read the uh, Zurich and London Agreement 1959. Turkey, Greece, and uh, England, Britain is not, uh, it's guarantor of the Republic of Cyprus, not either Turkish Cypriot community or 
Greek Cypriot community. They guarantor from the island integrity of the uh, territory of the island, Republic of Cyprus. Uh, this is why uh, they are missing. They are always thinking that Turkey being an island to protect Turkish Cypriots. This is the wrong uh, impression that they should change their mind. Of course, uh, each community has their, uh, they don't trust each other. This is very crystal clear for me also. But they, uh, this uh, be, belief or this untrust uh, position that great communities, great by the education systems in both sides. They sent teachers from uh, Turkey and Greece during the 40s, 50s to the island to create ground for the conflict, to increase the nationalism and uh, chauvinism in both communities. Afterwards, they sent armaments and Gazan officers to, to start the conflict in both sides. Uh, I can say that education systems in both sides are wrong nowadays, consider lots of chauvinistic and nationalistic elements. I'm talking about both community, not one-sided. We, we have to look into the uh, both education system in curriculum in both sides, uh, not teaching enmity and hatred uh, each other community. We should teach uh, how to be a tolerate each other community. We have to learn our uh, both language, Greek and Turkish, should be teach, uh, uh, learned by kids in our school by communication level. I'm not talking about the uh, high level, actually. Uh, this kind of measures create a com uh, confidence between two sides. And trading is another factor. Both Cypriots, they should cooperate on trading, buying and selling the things. I mean, the company, they should uh, cooperate together. This can be a a uh, good base for the both communities to create confidence. Otherwise, uh, inviting somebody to, to, be, to being a guarantor of the Cyprus and protecting communities, this is, this is ridiculous, actually, in, this, in these days. We are Cyprus being a member of European Union since 2004. Uh, guarantors in 2004, uh, 2020, it's ridiculous for me. Uh, we have to take steps uh, gradually to create confidence both sides. And this create, uh, uh, we don't need any uh, guarantors afterwards. Okay, thank uh, you for that. You made that point. Okay. Can I just now, we've had several comments saying, as ever, and I find this for so many meetings that I've chaired and been involved with, we, Turkish Cypriots, always talk about the past. We're obsessed with it. We're obsessed with reliving the history. We know the history. Most of us will understand the history, the sorry history, the sad history of Cyprus. But the uh, purpose of this was post-election. Where are we going from here? Um, is there any hope? I mean, somebody has posted on there saying that President Anastasiades has said he's willing to go back to the table and, and pick up where he left off at where it was left off at Crans Montana. And why is um, President Erdogan not taking up this offer and now talking about a two state solution? Um, where are we going from here? Because I don't think we've really answered. I, I know you won't have the answer, but where do you think we're going from here? Can I start with Daria, honey? Um, yes. And um, yes, I agree that we're stuck in the past and we keep talking about uh, the past over and over. When um, I had a look at the at the comments, uh, mostly they were about the past as well, what happened in 60, in 63, in 70, 74, whatever. Um, let's, let's look at the future. I think um, Mr. Anastasiades was very much relieved with the election of Mr. Tatar um, because I don't think he was um, after, I mean, it was actually obvious um, about a year before Crown Montana that he wasn't um, willing to um, to reach a settlement with Mr. Akinji. We have been um, seeing the signs. And then in Cran Montana, um, what happened uh, is uh, basically the, the negotiations collapsed. And at that time, he announced uh, a 
for a few days that um, actually he would um, he would be willing to negotiate a two-state um, solution but then it was over it was a misunderstanding sort of thing he said and um, he didn't mention it then it's uh, he started talking about a loose federation um, which didn't go anywhere um, afterwards is there um, still hope for a federation i think there is still hope if um, if we get together with um, the those Cypriots on the islands that um, want to live together, basically, I'm talking about um, all Cypriots, Turkish speaking, Greek, Greek speaking uh, Cypriots, and um, if we actually try to um, understand each other and um, build the build the settlement, build the peace culture that we want to live in. Someone asked who is going to guarantee the peace. I don't think peace can be guaranteed. It's us, Cypriots, who is going to build peace and who is going to sustain it. And um, the sooner we understand that, it's up to us to get there with the support of the international community, not with the international community pushing us there, but us doing the job and the international community supporting us, I think we still have hope to get there, but we don't have much time. Thank you very much. Um, I've got another um, question here. Somebody's Mustafa Mersinolo has asked me directly, well, he asked me privately, he said, don't you think everyone has accepted the reality of two states? And then those two states negotiate amongst each other as an independent state. So the peace that has been established one way or another since 1974 continues. I mean, the reality is, the status quo is, it's two separate states. That's the reality. They're not uh, official. They're not official, certainly for the North part, but that's the, the reality. Um, so somebody has asked this question saying, do you think that the two entities should be having a discussion or negotiate amongst themselves about how that's going to work. Do you think that's a, an option? Um, well, I will um, answer with a question, actually. If this was an option, why didn't it work since um, 83? There were two states. The TRNC is not recognized by anybody, really. Turkey says it recognizes it, but believe it or not, Turkey cannot have a football match with a Turkish Cypriot organization because um, the UFA uh, doesn't allow it. I mean, Turkey says I recognize CRNC, but actually they flew to Larnaca to have a football game with a Greek Cypriot team, but they cannot have a football game with a Turkish Cypriot team. And this is only one example of the reality of Turkish Cypriot's everyday life. I mean, what two states are we talking about? I'm not, um, if I don't have the Republic of Cyprus passport, I cannot go anywhere. I cannot fly to, to the UK, basically. So um, if it was possible, it would have happened um, till now. That's my answer. Can I just make one comment? Because I've had quite a few comments about this. People are saying that I'm being disrespectful by dismissing the past. Um, I think the point, the whole point of this panel tonight was to talk about the future, what comes after the latest elections. And that's what I'm trying to steer the panelists to discuss. I know that people watching still want to talk about what happened in 74, 70, 63, uh, and all the rest of it, but this isn't about this. We want to talk about what what comes next because I don't think anyone has that answer. We know what the new president has said he wants. We've heard what Turkey is saying they want, but I'm not clear that that's what the Turkish Cypriot community as a whole want. Because certainly 48% who voted for Mustafa Akuncu don't don't want that. So where do we go from here? It seems to me. As Turkish Cypriots, I'm sorry, I'm going to just make a few comments. It's just that we're always waiting as a community for outside forces to tell us what we need to do. We never seem to be able to make our own decisions uh, or, you know, as we used to call self-determination, there's an old fashioned phrase about where we want to be, what sort of a community, what sort of a country we want to live in. We've been living in limbo since 1974. 
Um, and the status quo is partition at the moment, certainly with COVID, as Mary Southcott commented earlier, we are, it is a partitioned island. There are walls around, there's some entry points, but we're living, you know, Turkish Cypriots are living in, a, uh, a, a, in partition. So where do we go from here? Uh, can I start with Shenerbe? Because uh, um, um, some people assume that there is a independent state in the north part of the Cyprus, and there are two states in the Cyprus. They they suppose that it's it's all fake actually. Of course, there is one side. Uh, Greek Cypriots, they occupied the administration of Republic, which is uh, half of the state belongs to the Turkish Cypriots, according to 1960. And uh, they don't want to share the rights of Turkish Cypriots also in the Republic of Cyprus. This is one aspect. And uh, the Republic of Cyprus, which is occupied by Greek Cypriots, uh, internationally recognized since 1963. Already Turkey recognized the Republic of Cyprus uh, supporting the resolution uh, 4th of March 1964-186 resolution supported by Turkey and recognized Greek Cypriot authorities as an official government of Cyprus. This is clear. Uh, I'm not, I, I would like to mention something about the history. Uh, this is why I'm uh, stressed on this. On the other hand, in northern part, <laughs> We are not saying that there is an independent country. Um, as I told you that we have around, best estimate, 135 Turkish Cypriots living in the northern part of Cyprus, but population is over 600,000. Uh, there is a so-called democracy, 45,000 troops except these. Um, there are the officials here, the, uh, the Turkish uh, ambassador acting like a governor of uh, Cyprus, North Cyprus. Uh, there are some civil servants in the ministries. They are, di uh, they are giving uh, directives to our ministers. And uh, everything is controlled by Turkey in, in the northern part. We are not able to, even if uh, giving any uh, directive to our fire brigaders of policies, police officers, everything is under control of the Turkish military authorities and Turkish civil authorities in the northern part. How can we say that this is an independent country, independent state in the north since 1983? Nobody, most of them, they don't know about the uh, aspect. My union uh, raised up the two-state solution in 1980, but we saw that it will not be realistic and we changed our mind and we collected 33% no vote for TRNC during the uh, constitutional referendum. I can say that uh, two-state solution is not realistic because northern part is not an independent state. It's a part of Turkey. It's very clear. Everything controlled by Turkey. And this is not a uh, real, real, uh, reality solution for two states. The of Cyprus authorities should share the uh, power with Turkish Cypriots. This is the solution for Cyprus. For them. And, uh, if we want this, we have to uh, insist on the federal solution, which based on by Commonwealth by Zonal Federation and uh, high level agreements in both sides, which are uh, both sides agreed on. Otherwise, two state solution is not realistic, never be, being existed. No, nobody's, first of all, Greek Cypriot authorities should accept it. They are not going to accept it. It's very clear. And northern part, the lands, majority of the lands in northern part is belong to Greek Cypriots. We say they are lands. We distribute the lands of the Greek Cypriots properties. And we are saying that independent country, violating of the international treaties, in, uh, violating of the human rights in the northern part of the island. Uh, we are not, uh, we have to respect everybody in Cyprus, respect their uh, properties also, respect their religion, respect each other, uh, behave and respect their human rights of the both people in Cyprus. Otherwise, uh, we are not uh, talking about the two-state solution. What is two-state solution? It's nothing. And it will not be uh, fulfilled any, any, any time. Okay, thank you. 
Um, there's been, uh, you can all see the comments. So some of the comments are asking, uh, the, well, somebody, I forgot, I think it's Ibrahim, who's asked questions before, saying that people voted for a two-state solution. I've replied to him saying it was a very narrow margin, but however, many people voted for Brexit in the United Kingdom and they're opposed, and those who voted against are very much opposed and I include, I, I include myself. And that is my democratic right to carry on saying, I don't agree with it because I didn't vote for it. Just because the majority win something, win an election and have tried to roll out their views as the conservative government have done in this country, it doesn't mean I have to accept it. I don't have to accept it. I sit in opposition uh, to the conservative government. So I just think, you know, when we have this debate, can we have it in a more informed way? And I don't want any personal comments about the panelists as well, about their wages and salaries. I think that's completely irrelevant um, and it's offensive. So can we keep to the issue, you know, and not the panelists? If you don't agree with them, you don't agree with them. You don't have to, but you know, let's not, let's not make it personal because I'm not gonna tolerate that. The next question here now is, um, uh, I'll try and find somebody who hasn't asked a question. So I'll ask the question is from um, former High Commissioner for from Cyprus to United Kingdom, someone I know very well, Euripides Evriades. He said, we might, may not be able to see the, be able to agree about the history of the past, but as Cypriots, let's agree about the history of the future, a common vision about the future without any so-called guarantors, powers and overlords. Comments, please. Um, uh, I, yes, um, I was about to say that I totally agree. Okay, that's good. Um, I'm trying to find some questions. A lot of them are statements here. They're not so, they're, uh, they're not questions. They're, they're, they're statements. Um, somebody said, can the panelists explain how they're not living in the past themselves by insisting on a 50 plus year old solution model and not insisting upon more creativity for new models. Chenobe. Uh, um, Chenobe. Um, new models. As you know, what, the, what are the, the new models? Are there any? There was a com conflict uh, several hundred years in Northern Ireland. But Good Friday Agreement solved the problem in the Northern Ireland. Uh, because of the negotiation, because of the dialogue of the both communities there, even if the conflict is deeper than Cyprus, they managed to solve their problems. Why we are not able to solve them? Because the, the interference of the Turkey, interfere of the, some countries outside that they create a problem for us and they want to conflict, uh, status quo, keep, uh, keep as it is. There is no alternative solution. Yes, uh, but everything is based on the federal solution. We have to cooperate on many issues for trading, for change in the education system, change in the curriculum to create a mental, uh, eliminate the chauvinistic and nationalistic element in our curriculum, in our schools, uh, to uh, teach our kids that to be respect each other, to respect human rights, uh, to un better understanding, uh, learning each other language. This can be, a, practical solution for uh, on the pathway to the federal state in Cyprus. There is no other way. I mean, uh, how can we say that new ideas? What is new ideas? Cooperation is the first uh, thing that we have to do it. Uh, either we find a solution or not, we have to cooperate. Both communities should cooperate. And this uh, creates a common ground for us to, for the better future of Cyprus. Thank I you. believe that. If we can find out a solution to the Cyprus problem, Cyprus will be the richest country in Europe. I, I am uh, fully uh, believe it because we have a very nice climate. We are able to grow all vegetables and uh, fruits in our country because of the uh, climate. We have a well-trained people, well-educated people in Cyprus. Uh, we have history go back to, to 8,000 years ago. We have uh, oil and gas in the sea nowadays. Why we, we are uh, fighting each other? This is the future of Cyprus. If we respect each other, 
is get be benefit for not only Cypriots, it will be benefit of the uh, countries around the Cyprus, Turkey, Greece, uh, Israel, Syria, Egypt, these countries, Cyprus will be a good example for everybody, uh, all these countries actually. We have to focus on to create a peace in Cyprus, to respect each other. Two states, whatever, this creates a conflict, another conflict for both communities. This very dangerous uh, dimension. We have to be uh, careful about the next step, actually. There is a clear solution, which based on the uh, federal state in, in Cyprus, which both sides agreed. We have to stress on, we have to uh, insist on this solution. Nothing else. There is nothing else. Okay. Solution Thank you. Cyprus. Thank you for that. So I've got a question from Helen Vasilak Vasilakas. Sorry if I'm pronouncing it correctly. She's asking the panelists whether they believe that the Turkish Cypriots takeover of the fenced area of Varosha will be the end of negotiations on, on the um, BBF. BBF. By zone or by communal federation, does she think? Do you think that's the end of it by opening up for Russia? Um, Delia, Deliana. Um, I don't think it will be the end of it, but uh, honestly, I don't think opening for Russia is possible. Actually, it's against the UN resolutions, and um, I, I take it as a disrespectful um, way of um, showing off in Cyprus. I don't think it will happen. It, is, it has been discussed as part of a settlement and um, I think it, it should stay that way. If it happens, um, it's going to create a lot of problems for Turkey. That's why I don't see it happening. What so Another, Mehmet Mahmoud has said, what about opening Varasha under the auspices of the United Nations? Is that an option? Um, um, is that something that could be called for to happen as a step towards, you know, opening up areas that um, communities can use? Um, the UN resolution is uh, very clear on that sense. It says um, it has to be returned to its original owners. So um, opening it under um, UN administration would probably mean that um, the, the property would be given to original owners and UN would administer it. I don't, um, I don't see it happening, but um, if it happens, it's possible, I think, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, another question here. Um, well, it said here, Mary Southcott says that Turkish Cypriot leaders were compensated when Britain took over. I think that's in response to an earlier question. Um, uh, there's a lot of statements here. I'm trying to find questions. Um, there have been 46 years, there have been 17 series of talks, 15 of which have been directly rejected by the Greek Cypriot administration. How can people not see that negotiations are something of the past? Shenerbe. Uh, Uh, for the Varosha, I can add something. Uh, opening of the Varosha like that, which happened uh, recently, is a clear provocation to uh, provoke the Greek Cypriot community, first of all, provoke the fanatics in the south, that they are demonstrating on the borders and creating problem for the Turkish Cypriots. And also, uh, it's an argument of Turkish Cypriot leadership, let's say, or regime in the north and Turkey, uh, instrument, political instrument against Greek Cypriots, which is wrong, actually. The best solution is on the resolution of the UN, actually, about Varosha. They should transfer the Varosha territory to the UN and uh, inviting the real owners, 974 owners, to come back to settle there in Varosha. This is the best solution and creating a cooperation from both sides. This is the clear uh, position. Uh, I miss and I couldn't hear the uh, question, uh, Miss Edger. Uh, sorry, um, I think you've answered it. I think it was about the UN taking over uh, yeah. Varosha, opening up under the auspices of UN. I think you've answered that question. Okay. Um, I've got another question. I've got another question here. Um, will the successful 
technical committees with both Turkish and Greek Cypriot speaking Cypriots reconvene. Do you know, do you have any information about that? I haven't heard anything myself. Committees, uh, they that uh, they done very good job actually during the last five years. It's been the cultural committees, mm -hmm. education committee also were, uh, well, and the uh, restoring the historical place, I mean, the cultural, uh, they, they did many good things. I mean, uh, yeah. this, so, this can be uh, ground for what committee for cooperating. Actually, this can this can be a good uh, step for forward. I've got a, now. I've got a very good question from Steve Coma, another somebody I know very well. I think he's is was a member of my own party. He said, "Oh, where's it gone? Too many politicians have a vested interest in maintaining the status quo in Cyprus." both sides. What can be done by ordinary people in civil society on the island to bring about reconciliation? I think that's a very good question. It's one I've asked many times. And I've been told when I visited North Cyprus, I visited South Cyprus, I've spoken, uh, sorry, Republic of Cyprus, I've spoken to politicians and people and business people. They, and many people say to me, the status quo suits too many people. They're happy with it. So what can be done by civil society who many people are not happy, who are suffering, the economy uh, is suffering, and particularly, I know, I certainly know from Turkish Cypriots, many who young people leave simply because there aren't the jobs there to sustain them. What can civil society do to bring about more reconciliation? Um, Delia Hanum, yes. you start um, first, and then I'll, um, Chenerbe, you can comment on this as well. I think um, our biggest mistake and challenge uh, for the future um, was that we actually concentrate on reaching a settlement and um, we, we think that is our goal, but actually that is the starting point. The, the living together will only start in a, in a proper manner after the settlement and we have to build that, we have to build a peace um, culture, uh, reconciliation culture, and we had we had to actually start building this from um, years back. We didn't do it. They, there are groups that get together, people are uh, meeting each other, we are socializing, but um, we fail to actually um, spread that to to many people. It's a group of people that um, get together and can actually live together. Um, but the, the majority of us, we still see each other as um, competitors, as um, rivals. Our, um, our um, negotiations in, uh, are in a, in a football game manner. I win, you lose. We, we fail to, to reach a win-win um, situation. And um, as the civil society, I am an active member of the civil society. I have been active in many civil society organizations. I think we should understand that we need to reach each other over the green line and um, work together to create this um, peace culture to create this reconciliation. We have to work on rapprochement of, um, of the two communities in order to be able to um, reach there, to go there. So our ultimate aim is actually not um, reaching a, a settlement of the Cyprus problem, but managing to live together, to coexist together in a peaceful manner. Shinedri? Briefly, and I've got a few more questions. Yeah. Um, the reconciliation and the cooperation between the two sides, civil organizations, is very important. I can give you one example. We have six teachers' union in South, three in South and three in North. We had a representation problem in Europe. We, after so long discussion and uh, uh, without some conflicts, we decided to uh, organize a uh, rotational system and now we have a uh, rotational system each organization represents Cyprus in Europe for two years and we 
uh, rotate this system and we solve our problem actually if you even if the uh, teacher organization that they are very tough some of them in the south they are against but we are cooperating together regularly we are meeting every month uh, nowadays we are meeting on zoom but before that we are uh, we had a meeting uh, physically at the buffer zone we organize exchange of the teachers and exchange of the students program uh, from both sides and also we have somebody else such some another organization for example by communal uh, initiative which is the uh, mixed group that greek and Turkish cypriots they are working together for the solution of the Cyprus problem we are organizing some uh, conferences some activities some mass organization that we organize together for for example first of september which is a world peace day we organize a common activity every year we managed to do it. Why uh, the politicians are not agreed and working, cooperating together? I think it's very important to improve such kind of relationship in both community. This can be a pathway to the uh, permanent solution of the Cyprus problem. Sorry. Um, the other question I wanted to ask um, is about confidence build. We used to hear a lot about confidence building measures and I've, one of the questions was more directed at Shinobe saying that you're, you, you've been talking a lot about Turkey. Um, but what about the Greek Cypriot side? Why, why do they never agree to any confidence building measures um, that would, you know, talk, some of the things you were talking about here are done by civil society, but it seems to me, you know, governments have not been involved in these confidence building measures and somebody the question was directly to say do you think the Greek Cypriot the Republic of Cyprus which is recognized as part of the EU in a stronger position should show more willing uh, in terms of confidence measures uh, confidence building measures if they're serious about um, renegotiating again for a settlement do you I think I'll ask both of you to respond to that um, you, oh, sorry, Shannon, you go first. And then okay. I'll yes, uh, there is hesitation and uh, they are very reserved. Some organizations, Greek Cypriots, they don't want to cooperate with Turkish Cypriots. This is uh, another aspect. Mm. But uh, we have to work together. We have to insist on the cooperation. Normally, there is a prejudice in the minds of the people, especially the administrators of the Greek Cypriot community, that if they are cooperating with Turkish Cypriots organization, they are going to uh, decrease the status of the state in the north, which is not true, actually. They are cooperating with the Turkish civil organization. Civil organization. They are not talking the, uh, cooperating with the officials, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are expecting more will of the Turkish, uh, Greek civil authorities to cooperate with Turkish civilians. For example, we are going to Greek civil schools regularly every year we are bringing some students and some teachers but sometimes the authorities in the south they don't let the greek Cypriot children to cross over to the north because they are saying that this is occupied part of cyprus and you are going to uh, visit the schools which is belong to the greek Cypriots in 1974. i mean uh, this uh, creates an obstacle for the uh, children and the parents not to coming together actually we are there is lots of aspects also but uh, we have to respect and we have to uh, work and insisting on the cooperation from both sides i'm not complaining but this is the uh, this is what i i i would like to have actually from expecting from the greek civil authorities to winning more cooperation and help the people, ordinary people, people in the street to come together, to cooperate together. For example, training. Sometimes it will be too difficult. For example, a Turkish Cypriot, as a Turkish Cypriot, you are, I'm not able to open an account in the bank in South Cyprus. I'm citizen of the Republic, but I'm not able to open an account. This is a discrimination. Uh, if I'm a citizen of the Republic of Cyprus, if I'm a citizen of European Union, why I am not able to open an account in banks. This is another uh, difficulties for us. I mean, uh, they should uh, act 
more uh, progressive and helping the Turkish citizens to for the cooperation. Um, Delia, would you like to comment on that as well? Um, yes, I agree. I agree um, with the with the comments that um, yes, they should um, agree on more confidence building measures. I I made a comment earlier saying that I think um, Nikos Anastasiades was happy with the election of Mr. Tatar, and I want to emphasize that I don't see Mr. Anastasiades at this point in the past i think um he he was um, at least acting differently but um a year before um Crum montana which was um i think in 2017 we started seeing that he actually um, wasn't willing to agree and he was still sitting um, at the table actually agreeing on things and then saying that no 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 i changed my mind i don't agree with this and this and this and because the um the form of the negotiations were nothing is accurate until everything is accurate. Uh, they kept going back and forth. At this point, I don't think that Nikos Anastasiades is willing um, to um, to um, settle the, the problem in the near future. But what is happening is that now there is Mr. Tatar and uh, Mr. Çavuşoğlu the, um, from Turkey that says uh, we don't want a settlement anymore. Nikos Anastasiades, we don't want a federal settlement anymore. Nikos Anastasiades um, now started saying that I want a federal uh, settlement and I'm ready to start negotiating. So actually, um, once uh, he found somebody that is opposing openly to a federal um, settlement, so he started saying that um, I'm, I'm for it. Otherwise, I don't, I don't really think um, his, he was um, willing um, on um, agreeing with Mr. Akunji um, either. OK, thank you. Um, one of the questions, uh, God, there's so many questions coming, so much coming through. I'm trying to keep up and I apologise if people are complaining, I don't ask every question. It's very hard because we only have limited time. Um, but there was one that I wanted to say, oh, it was here by Steve Cromer. He said, how can we have two equal states when one is an EU member and one is a protector of a larger power? Shenabe? Cyprus entered the European Union as a whole. Only difference is a key community suspended for the North. Yeah. And the main aim of us, we are always saying that to unite our island and uh, we create a one country, uh, United Cyprus, in European Union. This is the solution for Cyprus problem. I don't care about okay. what they are saying when the protectorate okay. or whatever. That's fair we, we are we are uh, we don't accept this. It's fair enough. Um, you know, uh, we're, Cyprus is a member of the EU as a whole, but as you said, they don't recognise the TRNC and it'll be it's suspended. And I can't see how 27 member states would ever agree to that anyway. So the, the, see, these are questions that the new president will have to answer because he's pushing for a two state solution. And, you know, some of the questions I've put and others have put, are how will you actually achieve that? if all the major players in the region, apart from Turkey, will never accept it. It's, you know, it's a very difficult concept. It sounds attractive. It is the status quo. However, it leaves Turkey Cypriots, in, as I said, in, lim in limbo, disadvantage, economically disadvantaged and not recognised. So these are the questions that need to be put to people who are advocating the two-state solution uh, and have never satisfactorily answered. And that, that's obviously a question for another day. Um, there's another question here. Um, someone here said, can any of the panelists provide us with an example of a major Greek Cypriot party that is willing to accept a power sharing federal structure like Australia, Canada, Switzerland, the United Kingdom or the United States? I'm not quite sure what that uh, is, but it's more of a comment, I think. I don't, I think the answer to that is probably no. Um, sorry. Some of these are very long questions. Um, I, 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 didn't, I did say I don't want to take personal questions. There's one from James Beckles who says, are there opportunities for independent actors 
to bring North and South Cyprus together, the UN succeeded to a degree with the Annan plan. Can this be reinvigorated? Delia? Anna? Um, I think in order to, to facilitate uh, um, they coming together of, of two sides. Two sides need to um, agree that they want to get together and start negotiating. If we if we want to call it negotiating, or they need to start talking the same language, if you like. Once they they do that, I'm sure the United Nations and um, actually uh, Miss Lud was in Cyprus um, last week saying that. Um, they wanted to convene um, a five-party conference and um, re restart negotiating. So the the um, facilitation role of the United Nations is still there. And um, if two sides agree to get together and start um, negotiating on the basis um, of the United um, Nations uh, framework, and um, there is the Guterres framework that was uh, put on table in Cran Montana, that is the new basis for negotiations. So if they agree to come back to the table and um, restart the negotiations, the framework is there, the support is there. The EU has been um, supporting more openly and um, stronger the, this framework of negotiations. So we can um, reach to another Anand plan, but probably this time it's going to be the Guterres plan. And um, we, can, we can take it from there, but is there a will on either side? That is my question. Thank you. Um, I've got another question here saying, um, oh, where is it? Sorry, I'm trying to keep up here. There's so many questions come, which is good. We're getting a lot of questions in as well, that the, the Greek Cypriot leadership will only accept us as minority group with minority rights. As a Turkish Cypriot, do you accept this? Even though Turkish Cypriots have lived on the island for hundreds of years, even though we are co-founders of the Republic of Cyprus itself, is it then acceptable to be only considered as a minority group with minority rights? Shenerbe. Um, as you know, there is a Zurich and London agreement which Found the Republic of Cyprus. The Republic of Cyprus is not belong to the Greek Cypriots, belong to Turkish Cypriots, which based on the political equality. This is the aspect of Cyprus, and we are not minority in Cyprus. We are equal partner of the Republic of Cyprus, and this is why we are fighting for our rights. It's very clear for us. We are not minority. We are equal okay. partner, political partner of the Republic. This is clear. Thank you. I think you've answered that question. And under the UN. Uh, resolutions it, when they negotiate it says two equal partners there's no the, the whole issue of minority communities doesn't enter uh, enter the language or uh, the um, you know any of the uh, um, discussions um, another question and I think we've got about five more minutes is it possible for the speakers to outline briefly for us their definitions understanding of a federal bizonal state, please. What are the main points this involves? Because there's a lot of confusion on this and different people, parties seem to understand different things by that. That's from Kostos. Kostos. What do you understand by this as a federal solution? Because there is confusion. Um, Delia Hanna? Um, yes, there is confusion. There have been different um, interpretations um, of this. My interpretation is actually based on um, two states um, as um, defined by the Anam plan, two constituent states where um, people can go and live in any of the constituent state that they wish, but uh, the administration of each um, constituent state is um, actually done by um, by that constituent state but there is um, free free movement between each other this is um, what I understand from bizonality and uh, by communality is um, this constituent states being Turkish Cypriot and um, Greek Cypriot 
or um, as some call it, Turkish speaking Cypriots and Greek speaking Cypriots. But um, these two constituent states actually work together with um, um, cooperate together under the federal umbrella with one international um, personality of that uh, umbrella and uh, with a federal um, management of the of the um, two constituent states similar uh, probably to many federations that are functioning um, in the world thank you um I've got a comment here, which I absolutely support. Um, that we've, we're going to move away from this minority majority polarized position and, and listening with more empathy to each other. And it's from Mary, if more women were involved in politics on both sides, the future would help. I was dismayed to see the new government, TRNC, not a single woman, 2021, not a single woman. And I, sorry, this is my wearing my feminist hat something I've campaigned for in this country. I've campaigned for more women, ethnic minorities to get involved in politics in the United Kingdom. And as a woman myself, uh, the idea that we no women ever have shown, have had any leadership positions in the whole of Cyprus, I think is shocking. And maybe that's why we are where we are. Maybe women are better at bringing people together, empathizing and um, finding solutions rather than posturing. That's my, that's my own personal belief. So does the, do the panelists agree with me on that? Or I what do you think? Uh, what can be done to get more women involved? 52, 51% of the population is excluded in Cyprus. I'll ask you as a man, Shenelbe, because I know Delia Hanna will agree with me. <laughs> I agree with you, uh, Ms. Edger, because uh, always women are more... Uh, eager to for the peace and peace culture i mean because they are mother they are sister they suffer a lot in, uh, mm -hmm. if you compare about the men the women uh, always suffer a lot than the men they know what is the bitterness they know the uh, what is the pain i mean the uh, lost their kids and whatever uh, this is why i'm saying that women uh, in cyprus they should stand and fight for uh, both both of them they should fight for the country of course uh, in every demonstration, women are always uh, pioneers for us. And I'm very proud of them. This is why I'm very hopeful to find out a solution on this problem. Thank you. I think that's very helpful. And I know, Delia Hanum, you agree with that. You might want to add something. What, what, are, what are you both doing to encourage more women to get involved in public life in Cyprus? In, in, from the, certainly from the Turkish Cypriot community. I don't know. It's not much better in the uh, Republic of Cyprus, I have to say. Um, is it because it's a very chauvinist society? Cypriots of both Cypriot sides, Cypriots are very, as a society, quite chauvinist? Um, chauvinist and patriarchal as well. I mean, most of the time, there are, there are young people who are interested, there are young women who are interested. But um, the you know the traditional um, gender roles are still very powerful um, and in the northern part of Cyprus. So a woman is expected to to get married and raise children and look after children and look after the husband. So the the main role given to to woman is is still very strong, which. Um, needs superheroes to um, to be active in political life, to be active at home and to have a job at the same time. I mean, um, for women who, who can do this, I have huge respect, but it's very, very difficult. Um, I can certainly agree with you, it is difficult. <laughs> but um, it's important that we have more balance, more gender balance uh, in Cyprus as well, more diversity. Um, that's my personal view. I've held that view for many years, actually. And I've, I've told politicians themselves when I visited Cyprus, where are the women? Women um, and young people as well. I mean, if you look at the picture of the cabinet that was announced today, um, you can see a man or uh, 50 years old in dark suits and that's it. No young people, no woman, nobody from... Um, from different uh, um, 
from different ethnic backgrounds, let's say. So are younger people and women shut out of politics? Yes. Shenelbe, why is it not happening? Um, I think uh, there is a general uh, traditional role in the community actually that people are uh, up to now they are uh, in favor of the how can I say that in English uh, is difficult for me. Um, the mentality is stuck in 60s in Cyprus. They don't let the mm. youngsters to take place in the politics and also in 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 governing bodies of the state in the in the north part of the Cyprus. Actually, um, of course, we the current government is appointed by Turkey. It's very clear for me. There is a puppet government. They don't need a free will of the people. I mean, the youngsters, women, they, are, they, don't, they don't want such kind of people. They need puppets to uh, obey their orders. Uh, this is why the mentality of the people and they shape such kind of the uh, government in North Cyprus, actually. Okay. And also, if we look <laughs> into the government in Turkey, we can see this similar tradition also. According to Islam, women is not uh, accepted as equal as men. It's very clear. And this is why they are not respecting the women's rights in Cyprus also, too. Okay. Well, it's, um, I make it a few minutes now to nine. We've got to finish at nine. So I think just now we're closing remarks. Um, do either of you want to make just a brief, and I mean brief, um, comment as so a sort of just to finish it like underline what we've said you know just to draw the meeting to a close now don't open up new discussions because we won't have time for it and the chat box will go mad um we've had complaints about the panel not being balanced we've had all sorts of comments and you know i, I can i just say that i was asked to chair this it's not my job to choose panelists but i think it's been an interesting debate um can Start with Delia Hanum. Do you just a final comment about the future? How do you feel? Are you hopeful? Um, actually, I have a hope that um, I cannot really um, understand even myself because lately everything that is happening um, is not hopeful. Um, but I do have this hope. It's probably because um, hope never dies. And um, we have to, in order to carry on living here, we need to cling on um, something. So um, we need to keep working to, to get there to, to a federal settlement, which is uh, what I believe in. And I have one um, short uh, final um, remark before finishing. Um, there, there have been um, comments saying that federation is in the past. We have to look at the future and stop uh, talking about the past. But we, we didn't live in federation. We haven't even discussed federation. I mean, Mr. Talad and Mr. Um, Aristophias discussed federation, negotiated federation for two years. And uh, Mr. Anastasiadas and Mr. Akunju negotiated federation for another two years. And um, that was it since um, 1963 that uh, we, the, the Republic of Cyprus collapsed and um, we, we started discussing um, in late um, 60s. So we haven't actually um, sat down and um, discuss it uh, seriously. So I don't agree that federation is the past. On the contrary, what uh, we have been living has been two states and we see where it led us to. That is the past and the future lies in federation. And um, thank you very much for, for this um, interesting discussion. It was um, really very interesting to, thank you. Um, to see the comments and talk thank about you. Thank you. I think it's just coming up to nine o'clock. So I'll ask so Shinobi just to say a final comment, very final. And I'm going to cut you to please don't go make it into a long speech. Just a final comment. And then I'll close okay. the meeting. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to live in such kind of status quo, divided Cyprus with uh, behind with barbed wires and the walls and 
thousands, uh, thousands, thousands of soldiers and armaments and guns. We are against the war. Uh, we have a bit of memories from the past. We have to look for the future to create a common country, United Cyprus for uh, young generation, for peaceful uh, Cyprus, peaceful region, peaceful Turkey, peaceful uh, Greece. Uh, and we have to create a peace culture because peace is a virtue. Thank you very much for uh, Thank you. Thank the program you very much. for tonight. Now, I'm very pleased. <laughs> Thank you very much to the panelists and thank you for everyone for staying and taking part in all the questions. I'm sorry if we didn't have time to take all the questions. Some of them weren't questions, they were opinions, points of view, which are all very welcome. I mean, you know, we are, as Turkish Cypriots, a very diverse uh, community. And of course, we're going to have different approaches and different views. No, we, we're not going to agree on everything. And I think it's important to have these debates and discussions um, without it becoming personal and polarised. So um, I found it very interesting and I'm very happy to have been asked to chair the meeting. I um, thank Seftus and uh, Ibrahim for inviting me to do this. I've enjoyed it. Um, although I share the frustration of most people and I think everyone who's commented is frustrated that we are where we are. So um, let's hope now that um, there'll be some positive moves in the future. I, I don't want to see when different like Turkish Cypriots come to London to perform or play sports or you know even want to you know take part in cultural activities that it's there's an outcry and and you know people try to stop it this is I think just revisionist and I think it's wrong we should be trying to bring young people together and we should be trying to move forward uh, as a community we're a very big community we're a bigger community in, in the UK particularly in London than, than in Cyprus so you know, those of us in Cyprus need to, in London, need to get, or in the UK, need to get a bit more involved as well. I think we need to hear more young voices, particularly, um, and I've already mentioned women, but we certainly need the young voices now. Young people are the future, and I don't think they're given a much, much, uh, you know, space in Cyprus to express their views, um, and, and certainly, as I said, about women. So I'd like to thank everybody for taking part. And uh, apologies for those that I couldn't take all the questions.